Good morning. How are y'all doing today? Welcome to Sunday School Highlights. I did change the title around a little bit today, and I put, changed it to the point. And the point today is knowing the truth of Christ is the only way we can experience freedom. So the title they gave was, Does It Really Matter Which Truth I Believe? I believe we know that. I don't believe that's something we question. We know it matters. And our lesson comes today on this book, and this is Bible Studies for Life. Uh, this is a KJV, and we get ours at Lifeway. Um, but you can get yours if you like. If you don't, you don't have to have one. I'll give you book, chapter, and verse. So the book, chapter, and verse today is John 3, chapter 3, verses 19 through 21, and verse chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. What are some things you've been surprised to find out or truth? Sometimes we run across things and we think that can't be true, but it is true. It says, look, we live in a day when people believe they are allowed to make up their own truths. However, in the Gospel of John, we see the truth is not a matter of human imagination. Truth is based on a revelation from an objectively real God who has spoken to us in history. So truth matters, and his truth should be our truth. Let's turn on over here, John chapter 3, 19 through 21. And this is the condemnation that light is come um, unto the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For evil one that doeth evil hath the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh in the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they were wrought in God. So, we all know the stories of the thief and the night and darkness and opposed to light. God is light. Jesus is light. Evil is dark. In John 3, we, we are introduced to a Pharisee named Nicodemus who came to Jesus one night in order to have a discussion with him. Nicodemus seemed to be sincere, but he was quite confused because Jesus' ministry and teachings didn't align with the mainstream uh, theology of the day. Jesus shared with Nicodemus the spiritual truths about how the Messiah would usher in eternal life for those who would believe in him. So Nicodemus was a little concerned. He didn't go with the mainstream. It was a little different than what he had always been taught. So he had questions. Even with the, even with the explanation, though, Nicodemus was not grasping Jesus' meaning. Since Nicodemus was struggling to understand, Jesus went on to explain a little more deeply. He told Nicodemus that light is come into the world. The meaning of this is obvious to us most Christians, because we have the full picture of Christ. So this isn't the first time we're hearing this. And for Nicodemus, it was. Redemptive work is scripture, is in Scripture. We understand that this light is a reference to Christ himself. He is the light of the world. But Nicodemus wasn't understanding the narrative. When a person understands of truth is based on a different worldview foundation, as it was in Nicodemus' case. It, does, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense <clears throat> to him because that's not what he had been taught. That's not his uh, upbringing. Jesus' teachings would, uh, wouldn't, make a sen would make, wouldn't make sense to anyone who was not open to the light God has revealed. God reveals to us things sometimes, and we see those in the light of the world. Of, of the world, which is the light of Jesus Christ. You have to look through these some of these things spiritually so that you can discern what is being said. In verses 21, Jesus has further stressed his point. He indicated that there are some who are truly sincere regarding, regarding their faith, who's, those who are open to God's light shining into their lives and exposing the, the nastiness that needs to be cleaned out. Sin. That's what he's talking about. These individuals can't have come to understand that God demands righteousness and judges sin. So if the darkness is in your life, God judges that. That's sin. They grasp that forgiveness cannot be earned by doing good deeds, but forgiveness is a gift of grace by a righteous God, our God. The truth is that we cannot understand truth 
God's truth as long as we're in the dark. Can't understand. How can someone forgive? How could how could God forgive us of our sins? Because if we haven't yet experienced it, then that is it's harder to understand. God's truth as long as we're in the dark, it says. But when we choose to step into the light of Jesus, his light reveals our sin and opens our eyes to the life we can have in Christ. You all right, Mama? Yeah. When, I, when we embrace the light of Christ, we live. Furthermore, the lives we live point, uh, point to the work of God in our lives. As verse 21 points out, his deeds may be made, made manifest that they are wrought in God. So his deeds are manifest because they're wrought in God. The truth of Christ we embrace inwardly is seen outwardly in the way we live. So the truth that we have on the inside of us is seen by the world in the way that we live. So we have to always make sure, are we walking and talking in the light of God? John 8, 31 through 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in, in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So if you continue in the words that I have given you, my teachings, then you are my disciples, he says. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. How many times have you heard that said? The truth shall make you free. John 8 began with the account of a group of Pharisees bringing to Jesus a woman called an adultery. I think we all know this story very well. At this point in Jesus' ministry, the Pharisees were totally committed to destroying him because they believed Jesus was teaching heresy. They were using the woman caught in adultery to trap him. Jesus outsmarted them, though, and the attackers left. Then Jesus addressed the crowd and told them, I am the light of the world. He began to write in the ground. It's not said what was written in the ground, but some have theorized perhaps he was writing their sins. He was writing... Anyhow, whatever it was, it turned them all, one by one, away. It says, the bold statement gave the Pharisees another opportunity to challenge him. He said, I am the light of the world, and this gave them another opportunity to challenge him. And there ensued another argument. This argument centered around the accusation that Jesus was teaching uh, about himself as he was, as if he was the the uh, Messiah. Jesus took the opportunity to teach these new converts a profound truth about himself. What Jesus was proclaiming about himself was that he is the Messiah who had been uh, prophesied in scriptures and the things he was teaching represented the truth. He wanted these new believers to know they could trust what he was saying and that if they followed it, they would know a kind of freedom that was not possible any other way. By using the word truth in verse 32, Jesus expressed an idea that is much more profound than most people ever grasp. To many, truth seemed to be rather abstract concept, particularly in our modern society, that believers everywhere, and they, that believers believe everyone is able to have their own truth. But a biblical understanding of truth is not relative at all. In fact, we can go so far as to affirm that truth equals reality. The Pharisees were trying so hard to prove their point, and Jesus caught them at every turn. John eight thirty three through 36 They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? We are not in bondage. What are you talking about? We are free. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but in the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So he was saying, if you're in sin, you are in bondage. You're in the bondage of that sin. They twisted Jesus' words to make them mean something entirely different from what he actually meant. They asserted that Abraham's descendants that were already free because they had never been slaves to 
anyone. Although they based their argument on a spiritual interpretation of freedom, they still did not grasp the significance of Jesus' words. The beliefs of the Pharisees had them uh, focusing entirely on their physical circumstances. They were looking for an earthly Messiah to free them politically. Jesus' Messiahship, however, had a spiritual purpose to bring people into a personal relationship with God. By believing in him, they would experience spiritual freedom from sin and freedom to live with God. They were looking for someone to come in and save the land, come in and save them while they were here. Jesus' concept was greater. It was eternal. In Romans 6, 16-23, the Apostle Paul talked extensively about slavery to sin. He made the point that every person is a slave, but individuals get to choose who will be their master, sin or God. In verse 23, Paul made the same basic point Jesus was making in today's passage when he said, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm so pleased that that statement is in there. The wages of sin is death. We deserve death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. What a wonderful statement. Indeed, the clear teaching of Scripture is that God's reason for creating mankind was to enjoy a personal relationship with human beings. But with the fall of Adam and Eve, sin became a barrier that prevented the relationship from being engaged. God was not, however, about to let that thwart his purpose, so... He created a solution to the sin problem, but the solution required individuals to recognize the truth and willingly receive it into their lives. Personally receiving the truth, when would set the, which would set them free spiritually and allow them to enjoy the benefits of a personal relationship with God. The way God created the, his solution to the sin problem was for Christ to come to earth in the man, Jesus live a sinless life to qualify him to become a sacrifice for the sins of mankind, die on the cross as that sacrifice, then be raised from the dead as a demonstration that he was indeed God. And have the power to forgive man's sins. That is how God structured reality to exist. Jesus affirmed this reality in John fourteen six when he said to Thomas, Y'all remember what he said? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. This comment highlights the the inseparable link between Jesus and the truth. Let's live it out. The author says, let's live this out. Let's apply this lesson to our lives. It says, identify, acknowledge, any doubts that you may have about the truth of the gospel of Christ. A lot of people feel uncertain about the objective truth of the gospel. In modern society, with its, uh, with its uh, relatively moral beliefs, can amplify those doubts. So sometimes the world can say stuff and amplify your doubts. It's, oh, that can't be. It's in the scripture. Trust the scriptures. Go to the source. Go to the source and get the answer. Don't take outside answers. Seek. The Christian faith is the truth. Thus, we need to determine to resolve our personal doubts. If you're suffering from doubts, pray about it. Find someone that you can depend on that can help walk you through this with the scriptures, not just with personal opinions, but with the scriptures. Help someone with his or her doubts. Talk to your friends about the doubts they may be concerning truth in the gospel of Christ. And help them to get those doubts resolved. There are scriptures after scriptures that can show us the way and the truth and the light. And it can point us to knowing what is uh, the will of God. Knowing the truth of Christ is the only way we can experience freedom. That's our point today. So that's the only way we're going to be free is to experience freedom through, through Jesus Christ. Who brought us the truth and the light to this world that we live in. 
Thank you all for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to be with you. This was a good lesson. It was inspiring. It was uplifting. It was, it, there's so many verses in there you know, that should give you peace to know that as long as you are believing the truth and the light of Jesus Christ and God, um, that's where we need to be focused. That's where we need to be centered. Don't let the things of the world, like the Pharisees of the world today, don't let people tell you differently. Know what you know. Stand on what you know and believe it in your heart. Uh, I know there's several prayer requests today. We have some locally here that we want to pray about and we want to uh, let's see some unspoken prayer requests there. Uh, so let's go to the Lord and let's pray uh, for all these prayer requests. Uh, Y'all join me in prayer. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for your love and your grace. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and to rise again so that the fulfillment could be made, dear Lord, that we could find peace and everlasting salvation through his sacrifice, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we just thank you that you are the light of the world and we can trust in you. We can believe in you. Dear Lord, as we bring all these prayer requests to you today and we lay them at your feet, dear Lord, just pray that you'll enter in your time and your will and your glory and with your grace, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we just ask that you watch over our nation and watch over our country. Be with Israel, dear Lord. Be with all the world as we see the things that are going on there and the suffering and the death and the sacrifices that have been made for people to try to stand up, dear Lord, for the light of the world. Dear Lord, we just pray that you will walk, walk with us and help us and give us the words to say always, dear Lord. In your blessed name we pray and ask all these things. Amen. Folks, we always uh, would like to end by saying you pray for us and we'll pray for you. We'll all get through because that's what we're here to do. Support, uplift, and help one another. And uh, bring the lost and the needy to Jesus Christ. So y'all have a blessed day. And uh, we hope to see you a little later. And uh, it's a little rainy looking here. But it's still a beautiful day. Every day can be a beautiful day. Y'all have a blessed day. And uh, we will see you all. We will see you all uh, a little later. Have a 